So I played AC Unity in 2021, and guys, I think I might be in love. You what? This is probably the hardest Assassin's Creed game to talk about because it has so much emotional baggage. If you told me Unity was responsible for breaking up a happy couple, I'd be like, yeah. That makes sense. There's really no good place to start. So let's dive right into the controversy. This video is sponsored by Monster Legends. If you download the game now using the link in the description, you can get 50,000 food, the epic monster Kaori, 300,000 gold, and 10 gems for a limited time. Have you ever thought, hey, I want a game where I can collect monsters, choose different sets of skills, boost my strategy in action-packed battles, and breed monsters of different elements and rarities? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you need to check out Monster Legends, which is free to play on Android and iOS. You get started by building habitats, growing food for your monsters, and then leveling them up for the battles ahead. One of my favorite parts of Monster Legends is diving into the adventure map, where I fight waves of enemies leading up to a giant boss battle at the end. It's a pretty tough fight, so I actually have to think and find the right monster combos to take this guy down. When you get strong enough, you can take your talents into PvP and fight in real time against your friends across different modes. There's head-to-head -head live duels, but then there's tournaments, where you fight in a league against tons of different players. And it's just a really good time. But you're only as good as your monsters, and there are hundreds to collect, each with their own elements, and rarity combos. My favorite combo so far has been the Treezard with the Pandakan and the Firekong. It just gives me what I need to win most fights. And there are new events every single week, like the Maze, where you travel through, pick up rewards in each spot, and find a new monster at the end. This is one of those games where you really never run out of fun things to do. Download Monster Legends now, get your rewards, and go have fun. The year is 2014. Dragon Age won Game of the Year. People cared about this. And Assassin's Creed fans got the first next-gen only game in the series. Yubi showed off this amazing trailer at E3, which made this gamer cry big fat <laughs> fanboy tears. I mean, parkour down, dense crowds, co-op. Wait, co-op? Okay, co-op was a little weird, but the rest of the game looked cool and I was hyped. Before Unity came out, nobody was talking about bugs. The conversation was, will Unity do something different this time? AC3 sold really well and people loved Black Flag, but the perception was, what have you done for me lately? Unity needed to be this shot of adrenaline to get people excited again. But the game had no chance to do that because Ubisoft shot themselves in the foot. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, bah. Unity needed more time in the oven, or whatever weird phrase people use for unfinished games. They really screwed up by forcing reviews to come out at noon on the day the game launched, which means all the innocent, wide-eyed gamer boys like me who were lined up outside GameStop at midnight had no chance. But that didn't matter a ton to me, because I was going to play this game and no amount of controversy was going to stop me from enjoying it. And. I actually did. You may be wondering, that's seven years ago. How do you remember that? To that, I would say, good question. You're really paying attention in class, so you get some extra credit. I'm lucky enough to have 11 years worth of YouTube videos under my belt. I could never run for political office because who knows what kind of weird I've said. I made this video three days after Unity came out, and it's just, just watch. What's up guys, JB2017 here. I have six hours of playtime on the Xbox One version. We're getting the same core experience. There's nothing really, really groundbreaking. The story is pretty typical. The main character is, I like him. He's kind of interesting. I think it's one of the best settings of an Assassin's Creed game. The combat is definitely refined in this game. This game is the most stealth friendly Assassin's Creed thus far because I have not played co-op mode only because I don't really have any close friends. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to know where you started. Actually, there's nothing else I need to say, so I guess that's the end of the video. Uh, click like, subscribe, hit the bell, you know the drill. Actually, it's complicated. Unity is a festering wound. It tore a hole in this series and it's been bleeding ever since. Hold on, let me file that back under things nobody wanted to hear. Conversation around this game is straight up toxic. Mm. Say anything good or bad and- Listen, you son of a bitch. What the f is your problem? You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn you son of a bitch. You piece of shit. You it honestly sucks because I think this game presents some of the most interesting questions for Assassin's Creed right now. Is this that golden goose game that old school fans always dreamed of? Since Assassin's Creed has changed, how does this game feel now? Stay tuned because we might, well, I mean, 
we should answer these questions. Before I played the game in 2021, Unity had this great awakening moment on the internet. People have been going back and being like, hey, this is actually pretty good. But before I picked it back up again, I did think Unity was bad. I thought it was known for not only tanking the series, but being just a bad game. In the last seven years, I forgot what I said in my own YouTube video, and I let Polygon or this guy tell me how to think. It was enough to make me stop playing these games entirely. Ain't nobody got time for that. After replaying this game, I realized I was a lot more sensitive to what people told me than I like to admit. And I think I'm still this way. For example, I don't want to play Cyberpunk 2077 again because I just don't think I can enjoy it yet. I'll just go in looking for reasons to not like that game. So I'm going to wait until my brain can take a breather and think for itself. This is why I like to revisit games years later. I have a lot more perspective, but also I don't care about what IGN said in an article seven years ago. It's more about, you know, the game right in front of me. And that's why I wanted to play Assassin's Creed Unity in 2021. So I did. And like I said at the top, I think I'm in love. I've heard people. JV, how can you love this game when it's buggy? Unity is a broken video game and it still has bugs from 2014 that were never fixed. You're ignoring the bugs, dude. LMAO fake review. Let's go ahead and rip off this Band-Aid now because I know we'd be 10 minutes into this thing and you'd still be wondering, why isn't he talking about bugs? Here's the thing. Me saying Unity has bugs is like me saying Cyberpunk has bugs, obviously. But Unity's bugs didn't ruin my experience with the game. It's a weird place to be in because usually I'm that guy who puts a game down because it's buggy. It takes me out of the experience and yeah, I get frustrated. But Unity's bugs didn't do that to me. They felt like tiny little mistakes that I saw, I noticed, I acknowledged, but I moved on enjoying the parts of the game that I liked. There was one time where I was ready to toss my controller through my television and give up. Sequence 9, Memory 2 can go die in a fire. I challenge you to assassinate that target without tearing your hair out. It sucks, but outside of that, nothing else actually made me hit that point where I was like, nine, 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 nine. This brings us to Unity's reputation as a still broken video game. This game just isn't unplayable to me. I wish people in crowds didn't pop right in front of me. I wish trees were less terrible to climb up. I wish combat didn't disengage whenever it felt like it. But I can't say those moments ruined the game for me or really even defined it. This is a subjective thing, but I think it's also worth pointing out that a person can enjoy Unity despite bugs. That is possible. and probably more common than this guy says it is. Another thing I was told before I started playing. Yeah, man, this thing is cool. It's great, but uh, too bad the rest of the game sucks. After dozens of hours, I was still looking. Where is the part that sucks? I never felt that Unity barely scraped by and that it was being propped up by a couple of good features while the rest of it was bad. Actually, it feels like a pretty confident video game to me. It knows what it wants to be and does it pretty well if you don't get derailed by the bugs. This isn't the last time we'll talk about bugs, but this whole video is not dedicated to how buggy Unity is because you've probably seen that video a million times before and I'd probably fall asleep talking about it. But more importantly than anything, it doesn't represent my experience with this video game. If you could accept that, then please press A to join the Assassin Brotherhood. Good, you made the right decision. I'm gonna let you finish, but Unity has one of the best open worlds of all time. I can't tell you how many times I wandered off and just started exploring this world. It's funny because I'm not that guy. You're not that guy. I'm so picky. I get annoyed by the HUD and the map and the icons in the same old open world song and dance. But Unity doesn't do that to me. I get sucked into this flow state where I'm just existing in this world. And unlike so many open world games, I can bounce between the story and the side content without feeling like I'm missing out on either. A big part of why this works for me is the assassin fantasy, which we'll get to in a minute. But for now, why does Unity have such a compelling world? For me, it starts with the setting. Revolutionary France is perfect for an Assassin's Creed game, but even better is the excuse it brings for making this city so damn interesting. You see burning flags and singing in the streets. You see crowds gathered outside the royal palace, overturned carriages. It's absolute chaos and... But I love, I love, 
I love you. But then you also see the normal stuff. Cafe theaters full of patrons, maids cleaning the sidewalk, dudes smoking pipes, ladies waving papers. You see the rich, the poor, the military, the bourgeois. You see society. This game proves that Ubisoft passed middle school English because they understood the concept of show, don't tell. It makes me believe this is a real place with real people doing real stuff, even though it's technically a simulation. All of these games have great set dressing, but Unity just hits different. There's so much attention to detail everywhere you look. One second, I noticed how the streets are unevenly paved. The next, I'm running through someone's McMansion where everything is painted gold. Ubisoft built out every interior in this game like you would in The Sims. Kitchens have boiling pots, apothecaries have test tubes. Mostly every place feels like it has a purpose and that's awesome. Of course, it helps that Unity looks the way it does. I mean, how did this game come out in 2014? I want to know what kind of blood sacrifice ritual you be performed here because this game looks way, way too good to be seven years old. The team chose four times of day and baked the lighting in. That makes the buildings, the people, everything look so good. I'm no game dev, but I have to think that this choice made things like 200 person crowds a lot easier to pull off. There's something to be said when you can make an argument for how a game could have come out last year based just on how it looks. That's a damn fine looking game. For the first time, your video game character does fit into door frames. I'll be honest, the one to one scale thing sounded dumb to me at first. Kind of like how everyone was comparing teraflops on the next generation and consoles. But seriously, the scale of the world and how Arnaud moves through it makes all the difference. The ways districts are set up and how buildings connect across the entire city. Just running down the street, there are so many obstacles to do cool little flips and twists on. Unity is like one of those weird metal globe things at a playground. It's just asking to get climbed on. Every time I get the chance, I am that kid who runs across the wood chips so I can climb that thing. Here's another open world buzzword for you. Bio. Open world games are always trying to make sure areas feel unique and special. Unity takes this idea and hits a walk off grand slam out of the park. Oh my. The difference between walking around the slums of Paris to the bougiest of bougie is spectacular. The story tries to take you to each area, but in order to really soak this place in, you have to take off the training wheels and explore. And if you do, it is magical. But prettiness only goes so far. What are you actually doing in this open world game? Paris is filled with interesting things to do that make me feel like the devilishly handsome assassin I am. Even the content that seems like filler is good content. Taking two seconds to chase down a thief or scare off harassers makes me feel like an assassin. It's actually fun to find and open all of the chests because thanks to solid stealth systems, taking out guards is a blast. I don't know, man. All of this just works. Unity has great side missions too. From the cafe theaters and Paris stories to the murder mysteries and Nostradamus enigmas. The variety is excellent. And yeah, I never really got bored with any of it, which as far as I'm concerned, Concerned is like parting the Red Sea. It's a miracle when open world games don't bore me. My only gripe with Arnaud is that he's completely silent in some of these missions. Oh, I read the tarot for powerful friends. Come with me. Uh, dude, are you okay? Say something, I'm giving up on you. Now it's time to talk about parkour. So many people say style over substance when they talk about this game. And guys, I'm just exhausted by this talking point because after playing myself, I can't tell you that Unity shouldn't have gone for style because holy sh it looks so fucking cool when it works. The way Arnaud navigates revolutionary France, bounding across rooftops, side hopping between objects, swinging from ledge to ledge and dive rolling through windows is just full of the exaggerated swagger of a Parisian team. What the hell did you just say? Outdated references aside, if there's any video game to prove that there is substance in style, it is Assassin's Creed Unity. It's just it's just so cool. But there are problems. I think the biggest one is that you probably played Unity like this. You look like an idiot. It's okay. We all look like a bunch of jackasses, but 
We did it together. It's really not our fault. Unity has bad tutorials. The fact that this movement guide from Jacers helped me lose 20 pounds and get my life back on track. Uh, I mean, I mean, it showed me how to play the game properly is amazing. It's a fantastic video that I've linked in the description, but also should not be necessary. I went back and found the exact moments Unity tried to teach me. And it's like that substitute teacher in high school who tried to teach the material and you're like, no, sorry, but no. They flash a couple of tool tips and then slap you on the ass and say, go get them sport. It's a shame because Unity can feel just as satisfying as it looks. There's this magical zone where you basically turn into the Terminator. You scan your environment, chart a unique path, and then go and do it and look cool. Now, people with thousands of hours more experience than me will tell you sometimes Unity is just going to Unity. It will crap out on you. And if that happens too many times, then it can be enough for you to say, nah, no thanks. I'm good. But if you make it through, I swear it is worth it. Now, there are still times where Arno takes this butt clinching jump and I'm like, no, no, no. but looking back after finishing this game, I remember all the cool shit I did way more than the not so cool. With all of that said, I completely get why you may not like this. The world is bigger. Arno's animations are longer than previous games, and it can feel like parkour is moving in slow motion. No matter how cool it looks, you might think, this feels like I'm running in water. Out of anything in this game, I think parkour is a toss up. Either you like it or you don't. And hey, it's fine either way. Whoever came up with Creed points deserves a Nobel Prize for good at game design. This is what I imagine Ubisoft's production meeting look like. <laughs> Whoa, okay, hold on. What if we reward players for doing cool assassin in our game? Oh yeah, that sounds great, right? This is a really good idea. How didn't we think of this before? Yeah, seriously, man, oh my God, this is great. And then what if we let them unlock cosmetic and gameplay stuff using those rewards? Oh my God, this guy's a genius. Promotion, promotion. This is how progression systems should work in all games. Reward me for doing the stuff that feels satisfying in the game. It's not perfect, but by God, this idea had all the intention in the world, and I love it. All right, I will not sugarcoat this. Combat is rough. It feels like a rickety old wooden roller coaster that you know should not be running. There's so many broken animations, and the camera feels like you're playing Crazy Taxi at 200% speed. If there's more than two gunners on the screen at a time, right to jail. luckily you can throw down smoke most of the time and... But combat just doesn't flow quite like it did in, say, Assassin's Creed 3. There are some awesome animations that make me feel like a badass assassin, but it never feels as good as it looks. But stealth? You want to talk about stealth? Stealth in this game had me feeling like a god by the end. Like I was playing chess while everyone else was playing checkers. There's a learning curve here that can feel frustrating, mostly, again, because of bad tutorials. Unless you watch a Leo K video, you probably don't know that cherry bombs don't work unless the guy you're distracting can see the bomb go off. You probably don't know that you can smoke a group of four people and kill all of them without detection. And you also probably don't know that last known position might be the most useful tool in your kit. It takes time, it takes patience, and it's not for everyone. But if you mentally sign up for the stealth experience, if you're on board for that, then I think it's fantastic. There are bugs with detection, but honestly, I can't remember getting detected when it wasn't my fault. Some enemies have bigger vision cones than you expect, and some of them can even look up. But I learned to play around this. Unity's detection hits a point where it becomes predictable in a way that's satisfying in a stealth game. I also like this cover system, even though it can be buggy. Sometimes Arno just doesn't listen, and that can be frustrating, but I love things like cover assassinations and crouch running around obstacles. It just feels assassiny, and I love it. If you can break through the barriers with combat and stealth, this game can feel so, so satisfying. Arno's hidden blade assassinations are a f***ing revelation. You can think of everything we've talked about so far as the ingredients to this big explanation sandwich. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. All of this stuff 
points to the biggest reason I love Unity. This game is the ultimate assassin fantasy for me. This is the point of no return. The world, the activities, the animations, the creed points, the combat, the stealth, everything here exists in service of the assassin fantasy. No, I I'm not telling you this is better than the new games because it supports the assassin fantasy. That's something that you get to decide for yourself. But I am saying self-contained within this video game, Unity bleeds for the assassin fantasy. It stands up on the podium and makes a case for why you should love it. It doesn't waste your time just talking about assassins. It pushes you off the cliff and into the hay bale and says, go be an assassin. It waves the assassin flag proudly in honor of making you feel like a badass who can run, jump, and assassinate like you were born to do it. And God damn if I don't admire this game, not just for what it sets out to do, but what it actually does. It's just, it's just beautiful. Before I played Unity again, I heard a lot of things about this story, mostly bad things. Arno is a big, dumb, lovesick puppy who follows Elise around. Belek is a great character who doesn't get enough screen time. The modern day, garbage. The list of complaints for Unity is longer than every single Kids Bop soundtrack combined. There's a lot to unpack here, but we're going to start with the modern day. When Unity came out, I was not cool with this. It felt cheap that just anyone could step into the Animus and experience the memories of a badass assassin. It felt even more dumb that this was part of some entertainment product from Abstergo. Looking back now, I realize I was still getting over a messy breakup with Desmond. I was holding everything up to the Ezio games and saying, no, this isn't good enough. So of course I wasn't going to give this a chance. Now that I feel like I have, I appreciate how Unity commits to its modern day. It's still a little bit cringe to be role-playing as a gamer who is recruited by the assassins. I play a lot of games multiplayer. I don't know about you. But I'm more sympathetic to this choice because it actually supports the Animus fantasy, which I love. It roots this series in sci-fi, which again is one of the reasons I fell in love with it back in 2007. Listen, you son of a b What the f is your problem? In my perfect world, there is always a modern day protagonist. And in this game, that person would have interacted with Bishop and Sean. But it's not a deal breaker here because we still get the Animus stuff. We're pausing the simulation. We're replaying memories to find something that matters in the present day. That's a foundational part of why I love these games. So Unity does that for me. Where it still falls short though is in the bigger picture. Because once you find Germain's body, Bishop is like, okay, that's it, dude. Keep on gaming. I play a lot of games multiplayer. What made me love the Ezio games was seeing the modern day assassins acting on whatever they found in the Animus. Unity doesn't have these moments, and I just wish that it did. And this is definitely a symptom of these games being made by too many different people. And hey, this was already the beginning of the end for this version of Assassin's Creed. Even if they did give us something to chew on, we probably wouldn't have seen the ending anyway. I still don't like these server bridge moments. The game interrupts you three times to find a portal because Abstergo is hot on your heels. I get why these exist. They're cool set pieces and they remind me that I'm in the simulation. But also the timing never felt right. These pop up around major story beats and don't end up adding to the modern day narrative other than to remind you, hey, I'm here, pay attention to me. Also, Arno doesn't talk in these and it's kind of weird because he's interacting with the environment, he's reacting to what's going on, but doesn't talk? I'm sure there's a reason with the simulation, but I don't care, it's still weird. We need to talk about the other part of Unity that Ubisoft commits to so hard and that's co-op. I did not know how good co-op and heist missions were because I never tried them. These blew my mind. They give you a cutscene featuring a major target from the game. They add backstory and then Bishop guides you through the mission. It's like all the great things I love from the Ezio games in one package. I love this idea, but I think UB messed up by forcing these to be co-op missions. So many of these are designed for four players only. And unless you're extremely good or patient, they are just a nightmare to do alone. That's right. I spent like three hours on the food chain trying to solo it and I just gave up. You might be wondering, that's on you, man. Why are you soloing co-op content? I just like to play single player because that's how I do. But I managed to push through on most of these and I'm so glad I did because my God, they are incredible 
incredible. I feel like I missed out for not exploring this part of the game until now. I didn't know you could make your own brotherhood club, compete against other clubs, and do challenges with your assassin buddies. The fact is, UB wasn't messing around when they decided to build Unity for co-op. I just wish they made the content more accessible for solo players like me. Now it's time for the Animus story, and there's a lot going on here. You have Arno's personal journey, you have his role as an assassin, and then you have stuff going on with the council, and Paris is burning, and all that historical good stuff. The game does a pretty good job weaving all of these things together. Sometimes it feels like too much, but for the most part, I think it's charming. The characters in particular stand out to me because of solid writing, and the performances are fantastic. The Marquis de Sade? Napoleon Bonaparte? Look at these cutscenes. Look at the mouse. Gondorcet knew he was being hunted. The nuance, the body language, is just fantastic. The quality of the motion capture does so much for Unity's story, and it almost, almost was enough to make me overlook issues that I had. Like a lot of people out there, I struggled with Arnaud. The way his revenge plot clashes with the assassins is frustrating. He gets to wear the robes and do cool assassin stuff, but he's mostly concerned with getting revenge. I think it's easy to feel annoyed by this, because as the player, you accept that Arnaud is an assassin. You see him get inducted into the Brotherhood. Then you run around in the open world and do assassin stuff. But then you turn around in the story and see that Arno keeps doing non-assassin things. So I felt this disconnect of, okay, I get that he wants revenge, but this guy is in the Brotherhood. He drank the magical juice, so he kind of feels like a dick. If we're being fair though, Arno's situation sucks. He watched his assassin dad die. Then he gets raised by the Grand Master of the Templar Order. So while Arnaud's behavior is annoying to watch, it's also like, what do you expect? The entire plot of this game, Delacere's murder and putting down Germain's uprising, this is his test. Only after he goes through it does he understand the creed and flies off into the sunset with Rage Against the Machine blasting in the background. Even if it's fair for Arnaud to act the way he does, given his origin story, should he? Does that work? I'm conflicted here because Arnaud doesn't convince me in this game. I know he wants to avenge Delacere, but I can't say that I connected with that moment motivation. Killing the Templars felt more satisfying to me as an assassin rather than in pursuit of Delacere's murderer. I was, however, convinced by his love for Elise. This game does a great job of showing you their chemistry. It's undeniable how much they care about each other. I spent a long time thinking about the story. I even took notes after every single memory to see like what is wrong with this story that people hate. And at the end of the day, I couldn't pinpoint one tiny plot detail. I think it's a big picture thing. I think it's that the gameplay clashes with the narrative narrative over and over and over again. When you have a character who pledges to the assassins, then you let me play that character as an assassin, and then I get to watch him make decisions that are not assassin. I don't know, it's just one of those things that hung in the back of my mind and sort of held me back from getting sucked into this story. However, there is plenty more to like here, and Arnaud's issues did not hold back the rest of what I enjoyed. Germain unleashing Arnaud like, I don't know, a battle bot to destroy the order is excellent. And even though the big sage reveal doesn't work the second time, because I mean, look at his eyes. You actually see him in one of the first missions, which I thought was a cool nod. Balek, oh my gosh, he is just the best character. The way he takes matters into his own hand to save the Brotherhood had me furiously clapping at the screen. Their showdown is a real, I brought you into this world and I can take you out moment. I love how the game forces me to assassinate him. I didn't want to press the X button, but Damn it, I wouldn't want to let him down in his final moments. I also love the conflict within the Brotherhood. How everyone hates Mirabeau, but just has to deal with him until Balek finally does something about it. Even if Arno isn't exactly on board with the Brotherhood, I love how much Creed stuff is involved in this game. You get to go to the sanctuary, you do the ritual, you get to be a part of the Brotherhood in a very direct way. This is such a creedy Assassin's Creed game, and that's a win in my book. The historical parts of this game are incredible. I mean, getting to check out all the database entries about different places in Paris, that whole classic experience comes through. But the big set piece moments, I mean, escaping the Bastille? Seeing Louis XIII get beheaded as part of Germain's diabolical plot is brilliant. Running into Napoleon, it's a short moment, but still very cool and memorable. Most Assassin's Creed games get this right. They weave history in with their narrative. and 
Unity is another one that does it very well. Like I said, I enjoyed Unity's story despite Arno's issues, but my biggest gripe here from a big picture standpoint is one I have with most Assassin's Creed games. It's that outside of the Ezio trilogy, they're all origin stories. It's the story of how a person becomes an assassin instead of what happens when they are one. It's like how Sony and Marvel keep rebooting Spider-Man and showing us how Uncle Ben died every single time. At times it feels like Elise and Delacere would have been better as footnotes in Arno's story. Something we see in the first few sequences or memory missions. And then we kick into this big swashbuckling Assassin's Templars adventures set in revolutionary Paris. I think it's fair to point out that since this is most Assassin's Creed games, maybe that's just how Assassin's Creed is. It is about the origin story. It is about how these characters rise up and become assassins. But then again, I look at Brotherhood and Revelations and think there are interesting stories to be told about these characters when they are full-blooded assassins. Basically, I guess I'm saying make more sequels, you cowards. When I look back on Unity after playing in 2021, I don't don't see it as this broken game full of potential. I see it as this imperfect little slice of assassin fantasy heaven where I can boot it up, run a co-op or heist mission, explore the world, pull off some sick parkour, and feel like a badass doing it. Dismissing Unity because of the bugs feels like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Wait, what the f***? What kind of psychopath would toss a baby in the bathwater they just used? Anyways, I love Unity. Not for what it could have been, but for what it is right now. That's it, guys. That's what I thought about Unity. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being patient. This video took me a really long time to just figure out in my head. I know I keep changing up the format with these 2021 reviews, and that might be frustrating, but... This time I wanted to make something that I felt was more entertaining. I was just kind of getting bored with writing these very long scripts and being way too serious about games. I just don't think that's how I actually feel about games. I think I'm trying to impress you guys with a long script or being you're making some point that you just don't see anywhere else. So this was my attempt to just kind of capture how I feel about Unity and share it with you guys in a fun, light way. So let me know what you think about this format. I really wanna make more videos like this. If you enjoyed and you wanna see more, be sure hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and you can turn on that bell so YouTube might send you my next video. Sometimes it doesn't work. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and don't forget to download Monster Legends using the link in the description below. If you download it right now, you can collect your reward and get a head start.